Jeff has pants. I have pants, but Jackson does not. So I can give Jackson my pants. Unless somebody wants to find a pair of pants. Right? I don't remember what. Jackson was like 31 to 30. No, it was a 33, 32. We didn't have a 33. Hey, guys. Hey. There's PK. What's up with the glasses? <laughs> oh. All right, guys. I'm going to go ahead and mute. All right. Everybody should be muted. Um, I know we have a few joining by phone, but most of us are, I think we're all here. So um, we're going to get started right away because I want you guys to have the full time PK and he kind of knows how to run his deal. Um, but just real quick, um, if you click on the very top right corner where it says speaker view, if you see those four squares, if you click on that, it's panel. So you can see everybody on the call if, we're, if he's asking you guys questions and talking to you. Um, otherwise, keep it on speaker so you can see PK. And then on the very bottom of the screen, the chat box, you guys can use that chat box if you have any questions. And I'll make, make sure that PK sees those questions as he's going through his training. Anyways, without further ado, I'm going to turn the time over to the man himself, P.K. Smith. <laughs> hey, guys. I apologize for my sunglasses. I look like I'm too cool for school, but I've got a two-day migraine going on, and I've been wearing sunglasses for two days. <laughs> Welcome to the call. We're going to have lots of fun over the next five weeks, and we're going to walk you through some processes that are going to help you connect with people. Uh, get to the point with some people, get to ask some fun questions that get to what is their, uh, what is their unmet need, and show people how your product line has an amazing solution to help them meet their goals. And we're going to start off with understanding how to get past the weather. So many of you um, will connect with people, but you don't get past the weather. You don't get past the niceties. You don't get past just kind of cliches back and forth. There are three key words, and they all start with C, uh, that will help you do that. Number one is a compliment. A compliment. If you meet someone for the first time and you're just connecting with them, a great way to break the ice and get beyond the how are you is to give them a great compliment. Now, you can compliment them about anything. If someone's giving you great customer service, I always compliment people who give me great customer service. Why? Because I love great customer service. I really like it when people love what they do and love the service they give to the public. So I'm always handing out compliments for that. Um, you can compliment how someone's dressed. I'm always complimenting babies because I'm a bit of a baby fool. I'm the guy in the grocery line behind you going blah, 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 blah to your kid so that they laugh, or just making any kind of sound. Now, I have the big gray Santa beard, so they smile anyway, and if I talk, they tend to giggle, and they giggle because my voice is very low, and it tickles their sinuses, and they can't help but smile. <laughs> it's a little trick I have, uh, and I love kids. I just love kids, but honest compliments warm up the conversation and allow you to know more about them. Secondly is a curiosity. Ask any question. Ask somebody a question that can help you out. Now the reason is a question triggers that could you do me a favor response. People love to feel helpful. They love to feel like they're doing good with and for someone else. So when you've got a real question, Ask someone, and it elevates how they feel about themselves. We want to make people understand their value to us, and a simple question can do that. The third one is a concern. Anything that pisses you off. Do you know why this red light turns so quick? I tried to turn the other day. It took me 10 minutes to get through this stupid light. Do you, do you even know the person who schedules this thing? Well, actually, it's me, sir, and I can tell you why this happens. Oh, really? And now you've met someone. Now, this means that you stop acting like there's no one to talk to. I hear that so often. I actually had a lady. She said, you don't understand, PK. 
I live in New Jersey. I said, I've been to New Jersey. What are you talking about? Well, we've got a lot of Isogenics millionaires in New Jersey. And I don't think there's anyone left to talk to about Isogenics. I said, really? Do you live where you can see the Empire State Building across the river? Well, yes, I can. Well, there's 10 million people over there. Go talk to somebody. Why? You never run out of people to talk to if you have the right posture. I live by the five and three rule. Five and three rule. If you let me ask you five great questions about who you are, and what you do and what you're interested in, you inevitably will ask me at least three great questions about what I do and who I am. And people love to talk about themselves. The other day, I went for a motorcycle ride. And on the motorcycle ride, it was only 47 degrees. So another crazy motorcyclist came in for breakfast where I was eating just to get warmed up before we rode home. And in a few short minutes, I found out that he was a retired military reservist, 28 years, retired airline pilot, just married a gal from Rochester, New York, and he's moving to Naples, Florida. I'm about to make a comment about Florida, and he says, who the heck are you? I don't even know your name, dude. Who are you? I said, oh, I'm sorry. I was kind of interested in you. My name's PK. Okay, PK, what do you do? Well, I own my own business. Oh, okay. Uh, what kind of business is it? Well, like I told you, I spent 60 days on my motorcycle. It's a really freedom-oriented business. I showed some folks how to become financially free, and that's my business model. Great big grin cracks on the guy's face, and he says, is this network marketing? And I said, what else would create that kind of freedom? Of course it's network marketing. And he said, that's great, because I love network marketing. Why do you love it? My parents made millions back in the 80s with Shackley. Cool. And then he started asking me about our product line. That all started because I was interested in him. I asked five great questions about, of him, and I'm interested. I like people. And he then wanted to know at least three things about me. Now, what he didn't know, I influenced him as to what he would ask of me. I asked about his business and his career. If you ask about business and career, guess what? They're going to ask you about your business and your career. The key is to be honestly interested. We're in a people building business. And if you aren't interested in big people, you're gonna suck at it. You're not gonna like this at all because we're constantly interacting with people. Now, I'm always wanting to draw people back to the business question. Why? Because I own my own business. A phrase I'd like you to adopt is, when someone asks you, what is it you do? Well, I got my day gig, like you know, but what I'm really excited about is the family business I recently started. Now, we call it a family business, because as most of you know, your isogenics position is bequestable to your children. It doesn't end when you go off to heaven. It keeps growing as your children take it over. It doesn't diminish. It continues to provide for your family long after you're gone. It's a family business. And of course, the business side, we want to make it very clear, we don't work for someone else. We own our own business. Now remember, 70% of Americans dream of owning their own business. And you're looking to see, is this one of those 70%? Because if this person dreams of owning their own business, and I tell you I have a family business, and I love it, and I'm excited about it, they're going to ask you about your business. Now, we created the term three years ago called the evolved economy. And we've spent three years doing it, but today, if you do a Google search on the evolved economy, it will only come back to isogenics and isogenics business builders. Why did we do that? Because we didn't want people to get lost just Googling network marketing. 
we wanted to create a business concept that was specifically tied to our business opportunity. In fact, if you Google the evolved economy and hit images, you'll see a bunch of page pictures that look like me, but you'll also see a picture of Jim Coover in a tuxedo. You'll see pictures of other isogenic millionaires because they use the term, the evolved economy. In fact, I just posted a minute ago, um, a few couples that I've mentored are retired military officers. And between the four couples that are doing this little tour, they have 125 years of military service amongst four couples. And those four couples are going around to military bases and military families and showing them why the evolved economy is the perfect business for someone who's serving their country. Because when you get transferred to a new area, you don't need to shut down your business. It's an internet-based business. You just gotta get used to the different time zones. But you don't have to stop and start and stop and start with your career in business while you support a spouse who's serving their country. It's the perfect idea. And right in their post by Nancy McAllister, you'll see they're offering out of business in the evolved economy. Now, we use the term because it makes people ask the question, what the heck is that? We want people to ask, what the heck is that? Why? Well, because if you just say that you are a network marketer, people usually have some stupid story about Uncle Frank who lost his shirt in a network marketing company in 1963. Now, the truth is, Frank didn't really lose any money and he didn't have a very nice shirt anyway, so let it go. But it's still a ghost of Christmas past. So what did we do? We created a business concept that took away all of those emotional ghosts and just pointed them to one company and one compensation plan. In fact, this week, I'd like you to watch the video if you never have. It's called The Evolved Economy Dash Australia. Now, it's not made by me. It's made by my mentees. I didn't make the video. But it's a little video that explains why every family should have an evolved economy business. Today, the most lucrative company in the world is Google. Google is an evolved economy business. It just passed Apple. And, well, put out your hand and try to hold what Google does. <laughs> it doesn't go in your hand. Why? It's just an idea. We have an idea about delivering life-changing products to over a billion people around the world using the wonder of the evolved economy. Why? Very little startup cost and almost no overhead. And yet the opportunity to create an amazing financial legacy for our entire families. That's the wonder of the evolved economy. Now that's not the answer we give, because that's a really long speech. We don't do really long speeches. We like to talk in little sound bites. And we wanna make sure when we're describing anything, we're using the person who's asking the question as the main illustrating point. Why? Because everyone's favorite subject is themselves. And if you talk about yourself too much, they stop listening. So when someone says, what's the evolved economy? Our answer is, you probably already know. You just aren't clear with the term. Let me ask you a couple questions. Question number one, have you ever ordered anything from Amazon? Most people have. Ask them what they ordered last. Make sure it's not dirty, because you don't want to hear about that. Uh, why? Because you get them talking about themselves. Again, their favorite subject. Second question is, have you ever downloaded a song from the internet to your phone? Do you have any songs on your phone? Most people have a few songs on their phone. I ask a follow-up question is, do you have any embarrassing songs on your phone? Songs that you only play when you're alone in the car? Maybe even a children's song that you tell your kids you don't like, but when they're not in the car, you play it anyway? Why? Because they laugh, they chuckle, and the laughter creates a little memory dart in their brain and they don't forget the conversation. I had one lady say, I don't have uh, an embarrassing song, 
but I do have a dangerous song. I said, what on earth is a dangerous song? Well, Patty Ann said, it's the hymn, How Great Thou Art. I said, okay, Patty Ann, you got me. How is How Great Thou Art a dangerous song? Well, you can't play it while you're driving because you got to close your eyes during the course, don't you? True, Patty, you should probably take that off the phone because I'm not sure you get into heaven if that's how you die. How did you die? Well, I was on a mountain country road and there was a big corner and How Great Thou Art came on and I closed my eyes and I floored it. I'm not sure late St. Peter brings you in. Just does my thing. Why? People like to laugh. They like to laugh. And the laughter creates the memory dart. Now, what we just illustrated was three concepts about fly fishing conversations. Concept number one, get the person who asks you a question to help answer their question. Why? It's called accelerated learning. They learn quicker when they're involved, not when you're giving a lecture. Point number two, get them to talk about themselves. Why? Because it's their favorite subject. And point number three, get them to chuckle. Why? Well, because it warms up the conversation, but it also creates that memory dart, and they don't forget the conversation. Now, by talking about the other person for just two minutes, they now know you have an internet business of some kind because you compared it to Amazon and iTunes. And you did it by talking about them, not you. And that's the key to connecting, guys. Be more interested in them and their evolving story than telling your story. People ask me, when do I get to tell my product story? My answer is, hopefully never. Why? Because they're not as interested in you as they are in them. Now, my mentee Mary is too cool for school. She went for dinner with um, complete strangers. And over the salad, the woman asks, what do you do? And Mary fly fishes her. She does the evolved economy. She does Amazon. She does iTunes. The woman gets it. She's a businesswoman. She says, okay, I get it. You've got an internet business. Yes, I do. Well, what's your product? Now, Mary's cool. She doesn't say isogenics. Now, it isn't for the reason you think. She doesn't say isogenics because she's trying to have a conversation about food. And isogenics doesn't sound like food. It's got an X at the end of it. Only trail mix and checks mix have an X at the end of it. Everything else doesn't end in X. Isogenics actually sounds, it actually sounds like a malware program we'd buy for our computer. Download your isogenics program and you won't have that nasty malware and spyware on your computer. It doesn't sound like food. So Mary says, oh, I forgot to tell you. It's nutritional superfoods. Now the woman immediately nerds out. I've read about these. What do yours do? Now, for most of you, this is much too big a temptation to not verbal vomit. Someone dumb enough to ask you, what do your products do? You're looking for an IV and a pack of Depends because you're going to talk till you die. Because someone was dumb enough to ask you, what do your products do? Mary, though, Mary's too cool for school. Mary's response is, I don't know. What would you like them to do? Now, this irritates the woman. The woman says, you mean you don't know what your products do? Mary very calmly says, sure, I know. It's just that we've got 70 products, and they address 30 different problems that families face every day. I'm not going to list off 100 things before the entree comes. You tell me your top two, I'll tell you if we're any good at it. The woman says, sure, I'd like to lose some weight. I'd like to gain some more energy. And this is Mary's entire product line description. Congratulations, you picked our top two. Then she goes back to eating her salad, ignoring the woman, who, by the way, bought two President's Packs before the entree came. Why? Because Mary kept the conversation to her. In your connecting time this week, I want you to get to one Key question. Imagine nutrition 
could transform anything about your health, what would you choose to transform first? Imagine nutrition could transform anything about your health. What would you choose to transform first? And we're going to want you to do lots of connecting this week. For instance, we'd like you to start utilizing the peer-to-peer-to-peer three-way call. Now, in order to understand this, you have to understand that all of us have multiple points of connection. For instance, I'll give you five of mine. I'm married. I have two children. I love to travel. I love motorcycles. And I love animals. I have a 47-acre farm that's just for pets. They don't do anything. Six horses, six donkeys, zero saddles. It's called stupid. But we do it anyway because we love animals. So is there anybody on the call that matches up with any of my five points of connection? Anyone? I love animals. You love animals. Would you love to have horses and donkeys out your back door? Yes, sir. Yeah. Donkeys are great. They're actually they really are. mules are better. Yeah, kind of. No, donkeys are cute. But mules are too big. We can pick up our donkeys and carry them. Come on. <laughs> I'm not as strong as you. <laughs> uh, well, I, I say we because I mean my son, not me. <laughs> it's the royal we. So you tell me five different points about you, Trisha. Um, I like hiking. I'm an artist. I swim. Um, I have three boys. And I am very involved in church. There you go. Now, I bet you other people in the call would find something other than animals that they have in common with you, wouldn't they, Tricia? Probably. Probably. When you understand that everybody's got five points of connection, you will use that method to connect your new associates with existing business partners. We call it the peer-to-peer-to-peer three-way call. Now, this is different from a normal three-way call where we bring on an expert and we edify them so they're just barely not Jesus, and then we hit mute and allow for the expert to talk to our friend as a complete stranger. There's that one, or there's this one. Now, one of the things that's radically going to help your conversion rate to consultant is to not leave your associates so isolated on an island by themselves. In fact, before your five-day miracle phone call, which we'll learn about, before that, I want you to learn to welcome people to your team. Now, if you haven't been using a peer-to-peer-to-peer three-way call, it's one of the reasons for your conversion rate to consultant being so low. It's the absolute missing link in inviting people in. Now, one of the reasons we want to connect our associates with other members of the team is that the relationships for a new associate make up for 60% of the equation that leads to their positive product experience. And if you think everything that your new associate needs is in that box from Isogenics, you are wrong. Because without that positive relationship with their sponsor or their team, the average new associate will not have the product experience they really long to have. You are in complete control of that. You can do something about that. How? by expanding their points of connection within the team. So one of the first things I'd like you to do is learn to make that a priority. In fact, this week, I'd like you to go out of your way to find a reason to create a peer-to-peer-to-peer three-way call for every associate you have. Now, some of you are saying, PK, I have too many associates to do that with. We'll start chipping away at it. Why? The connection to the greater team is going to help them with two things. Lifetime 
product experience and or letting you help them getting their products highly discounted or completely free. Now that is our goal. Our goal is to extend the lifespan of our associates, not to expect that people get on the product and after 30 days they drop off. Now I've been yammering on about starting at the business builders pack and coming down from there and using the script and we'll get that to that another day. But honestly folks, I just found out some interesting statistics. We've always been told that the President's PAC has the highest retention rate. Well, that has changed in the last few years. Here's the real numbers. If someone starts with a 30-day, after six months, only 29% of them are still using the product. If they start with a President's PAC, 49% of them are still using the product. But if they start with a Business Builders PAC, 56% of them are still on the product. Why? Because they were exposed and experienced and experimented with so many products their first month. They are still on auto ship. Now, some of you don't understand why this matters. And it's because you think in your business, you're always just going to keep shoveling in fresh enrollments. That's not how you build your business. In too many isogenics businesses today, because there isn't enough care given to how do we ex extend the lifespan of the average enrollee, people are falling off auto ship faster than you're enrolling them. And therefore, you have no ability to build on that business volume that allows you to cycle more and as paid as executive, enjoy more matching cycles. You can do something about that. The first step towards doing something about that is simple. Connect your associates with the team. Now I'm gonna hear a little whining here and the whining is surrounded one idea. You don't understand PK, when people sign up, they tell me, I don't want to talk to you. If I have any questions, I'll text you and you'll text me back. Okay. When someone tells you that, tell them the truth. Tell them that they're hindering their own success. Tell them the truth. 60% of the equation that allows for an associate to succeed is the relationship to the team. It isn't in the box. So if you want to tilt the scales into your favor and make success more of an eventuality, then meet the rest of the team. At least answer my phone call. Don't make me chase you. Why? I contend that if isogenics were sold at GNC or put on the shelf at Walmart, it wouldn't work at all. It wouldn't work one little bit. You, you have to tell the truth. You have to tell the truth that the relationship is actually that important. And for some of you, this week it means going back and reinventing that relationship with your associates. Don't sign them up and abandon them. They'll figure it out on their own. Or just because someone doesn't text you back, I guess they don't want to talk to me. Don't be so soft-hearted. Remember, you're helping people reinvent their relationship with food. You're helping them recapture their health. Just beginning the journey, but we're going to recapture their health. Their challenges are not entirely physiological. It's not just what they're eating. It's what's going on between their left ear and their right ear. And you have to help them with it. Now, as we add these principles layer upon layer into our business, and as we add these new skills, it's all going to take time. And what you have to know is your business does require time. Now, this isn't time that's just random hard work. It's time that is about investing and investing wisely. 
Now, most people come from an earner's mindset, and an earner just thinks week to week because, frankly, they don't feel like they have any control over changing their financial future. Where an owner, which all of you are, thinks quarter to quarter and year to year. They've got a plan and they're working the plan. But they're not just randomly doing whatever. They're wisely investing in their business. Now that means knowing where your time goes, where it should go, and keeping track of your success rate. People who don't want to count things don't care about improving things. For instance, I'm after corporate to create a button in the back office so that every month we can press a button and know what percentage of our downline made a qualifying BV order that month. Why? Right now, we don't know how to keep track of that number. I'd like us to know why so we can improve it. Because as we improve it, it helps the corporation's bottom line and it helps our bottom line. But today, we don't know what that number is. We need to know that number. We need to know that number. People who own their own business aren't afraid of numbers. Now, when you look at your business, many of you, most of you, probably almost all of you, are doing this part time. Well, that means you need to find 10 hours a week to invest in your business. Now, these are investing hours. These are return on investment activities. Not listening to podcasts, not being on a call like this. This is just one of the 10 hours. These are actually hours that you spend investing in your business. And this is the missing link for most of you. You don't know how much time you spend. You don't know when you're going to spend it. I recommend that you have a calendar like I do that shows the week at a glance. And at the beginning of the week, find your business building time. Block it out. Yes, emergencies happen. But not everything's an emergency. Block out the time you need for your business. Now, once you're paid as executive, you're going to split up your time five, three, and two. Five hours a week, you're still going to spend enrolling into your own position. Why? Because the moment you stop enrolling, the clock begins ticking and your team stops enrolling. Management mode, building everyone else's position, all things that lead to not only your position falling apart, but everyone else's position falling apart. Why? Because of the 90-day echo. Anything that you're doing right now, your team will be doing within 90 days. I had a phone call with a couple I've been mentoring for years. In fact, I helped them go Isogenics Millionaire. They went two-star to five-star in, what, nine months. So they contacted me in the fall, and they said, PK, I don't understand. No one in our team is making consultants. Can't believe it. There are no consultants being made. So, because I'm not a very nice person, I said, cool. So what's the name of your last consultant? Yep, lots of silence on the line. So I said, well, I got time. Why don't you check in your back office? Look in your back office and find your last personally enrolled consultant. So they did, and I sat there and checked my email while they looked, and after five minutes, they came back and said, I think we get your point. Oh, what point is that? Our team is doing what we're doing. Oh, really? So what should you do? We should hang up the phone with you, and we should go make some consultants. Good job. See you next week. And off they went. This isn't easy, folks. There are too many things to distract you from your enrolling game, and you can't let it happen. You can't let it happen. Now, make sure that you understand what an enrollment is. An enrollment is getting someone on the product, getting them a great product experience. 
we want to have lifetime consumers. Now that means you're going to contact people initially, you're going to follow them up four to six times over four to eight months, because that's what an average enrollment requires. You're going to show them the value of investing in a larger pack, and you're going to help them have a great product experience. During that product experience, you're going to show them the value of getting their products paid for, letting their products be for free. And once they have a couple of associates, you're going to show them how to do the same steps with their associates so that their products are free. An enrollment is not putting a shake in someone's mouth. An enrollment is making a crystal manager. Most of you don't have that as the architecture for your business. Most of you think, shake and mouth, I'm done. No, you just started. The reality is, some of the best rock stars in the world, the very best they do is 25% of their associates become consultants or higher. That would be a fantastic goal because the international average is less than 10%. Aim for a number and hit it. But know that you can't do that without investing the time. You have to be investing at least five hours a week to your enrolling. After that, spend three hours a week showing your team how to be a great enroller. Please don't teach your team how many angels can dance on the head of a pin, because nobody cares, including God. Don't tell them things that they don't need to know, that don't help them become a great enroller. Let them learn all of that trivia from somebody else. You, you show people how they can be a great enroller. Now, if you understand the power that you offer to someone when you stay that specific in what you're doing, people will begin to duplicate exactly what you're doing and teaching. And you can create a team that naturally makes lots of consultants. The last two hours is exclusive for anyone who wants to make a run to executive. And that's your mentoring time. Enrolling time, training time, mentoring time. Now this is the missing link for most people. And this is why most people never leave the 60 cycle hump because they don't deliberately make executives. You have to make executives on purpose. In fact, you're looking to make a new one or two executives every 90 days. Because if you make executives every 90 days, you will grow out of the 60 cycle hump. You'll find the people who want to go one star, two star, three star, four star with you. If you don't, there's no leaving the 60 cycle hump. It doesn't happen. So it's better that you learn up front what are your three conversations enrolling, training, and mentoring. Now, if you're not an executive today, forget everything I just said. Spend all 10 hours a week in enrolling conversations because you have to get to executive. You have to get to executive and stay at executive. Why? Because at executive, you make Jim Coover haul out his big fat check writing pen. And we love to make Jim Coover haul out his big fat check writing pen. And there's a whole bunch of stuff that Jim Coover has to haul out his big fat check writing pen for if you're paid as executive every week. Now, one of my mentees a year ago went executive, no, went, went millionaire, became one of the isogenics millionaires. And she wasn't paid as executive when she went millionaire. And she wasn't paid as executive when Top Achievers came along. So she was invited to Top Achievers but she had to pay her own way because Jim Coover won't haul out his big fat check writing pen if you're not paid as executive. You got to make him. Now that means your goal is not to have 10 consultants. That's when Jim takes out the pen. Your goal is to have 30 consultants, 15 on your left, 
15 on your right, and half of them at manager and above. Why? You'll never fall out of executive. And Jim needs to keep the fat pen out for you. That's your goal. When you're wondering in isogenics, what should I be giving my time to? You ask the simple question. Follow the money. Where does the majority of the revenue go? Who does it go to? It goes to people who are paid as executives. So don't delay. Don't slow down. Don't wait to see whether executive something you should get to and stay to. Spend all of your time making your 10 consultants, five in your left and five in your right, and going beyond that so that you never fall out. Attrition is reality. Everybody loses consultants. Don't let that mean you miss a single week. Now, if you can balance that time, you can build your business. If you can invest the 10 hours a week, you can build your business. If you won't invest the time, chances are pretty slim that you can build your business. Now, last night I had a very difficult conversation with an isogenics business builder. She told me that she didn't have time to build it. Well, she told me she had time she wasn't willing to give to build it. I said, so what are you going to do? She says, I think I'm going to stop fooling myself. I think I'm going to stop lying to myself. And I'm not going to call myself a Nysogenics business builder if I won't put in the time. So I'm going to give my Not Now book to my sister-in-law, and I'll help her build her business. But I'm not making this a priority in my life, and I need to stop fooling myself and other people. And that's exactly what she did. Why? This isn't a lottery, it's a business. And as a business, you got to find the time. Now, for most of you, that means stop watching TV for two hours in the evening. Between 8 and 10, shut off the TV. That's why God made DVRs, right? You can watch it later on. Or stop watching TV, because not all of it's that interesting. But that's mostly what you're sacrificing. As the Barnums say, there is no BV in TV. But don't fool yourself. You can't spend 30 minutes a week and build this. You have to, you have to give time to your business and you have to invest wisely. Now, some of you already have some folks raising their hands and saying, I'd like to build this with you. Be careful how you invest yourself in other people. Why? Because people can talk a good game. We have a rule of thumb. We only add energy to actions, not words. Because people can say anything. So when someone raises their hand and says, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this, your response should be, excellent. Why don't you put me on 10 three-way calls this month? You get me on 10 three-way calls, I'll probably get you five new associates, and you'll be rocking and rolling. Now, the keener will say, I'll put you on 10 this week. Cool, put me on 10 this week. The not-so-keener will say, did you say 10? Yeah, I said 10. That's 2.5 a week. Oh, can't you just tell me what I should do and say? Actually, no, I can't. This is more of an apprenticeship kind of program, and you need to learn with me, not from me. So we need to get on three-way calls. Well, I don't think my friends want to be on three-way calls. Oh, huh. you're kind of screwed. Why? Because that's your next step. Have enough enthusiasm and excitement, but don't say too much. Why? Because you don't know what you're doing yet. And you're going to learn how to do this by being on 10 great three-way calls with me. One of the biggest mistakes early builders make, they give lots of time and energy and training to people who don't actually enroll anybody. They aren't taking action. They're talking about taking action. They just aren't taking any action. Now, if that's any of you on this call and I'm offending you, I'm not sorry. I'm sorry that that's you, but I'm not sorry. I want you to learn to take responsibility for your business. 
and know that you're in complete control of this. You can build this. This isn't meant for Einsteins. It's meant for people who will wisely invest, but you don't need to know the theory of relativity. You don't. You just got to be willing to put in 10 solid hours. Some of you this week will say that to people and they'll put you on the calls. Some of you this week will be disappointed. Don't be disappointed. That person was just going to take you away from your rolling time. Don't be disappointed. They'll come around later. It'll be fine. Don't lose patience because people aren't ready to build yet, but don't pretend they're ready to build when they're not ready to build. It's real, guys. The key factor between you and your success is how much you'll utilize this. I know Trisha would gladly put on an IV and wear depends all day if you put her on three-way calls, right? Yeah, I think so. Or like me, she can just learn to hit mute when she flushes. It all works. It's fine. You can stay on the three-way call. Yeah. I'm already doing that, PK. <laughs> Hitting mute or wearing depends. Which are we talking about? Hitting mute. <laughs> ah, good. Smart girl. <laughs> It's the absolute key, guys. The more you'll utilize your team, the more your business will grow. And you setting that boundary with other people is a good thing. You're not lying to them. I've had people say, you know what? I think I've got 30 minutes, maybe a week to build it. Well, good luck. I hope you find a builder. What do you mean? Her. What do you do that you only have 30 minutes? Wow. What do I do? I own a business, so it means I get up early, and it means I stay up late because I'm excited about my business, and I connect with people all around the world, and some of it pans out, and some of it doesn't. Some of it's still in the process, but I stay in the game. This week, I'd like you to up your game. If you're not an executive on this call tonight, I'd like you to put in 10 hours of enrolling conversations between now and next week. If it means you reach out to someone else in the line and say, hey, help me, I don't know what to do. Fine, as long as you do it, it'll work, guys. It will work. Now, there will be people who will say, well, why aren't you doing this? And why aren't you doing that? I've got to put my 10 hours in. i got to put my 10 hours in. Why? Because I'm building a financial legacy for my family. I was traveling one weekend far from home. Kind of a snotty broad said, so what does your wife think of this? I said, think of what? Well, you're away on the weekend. Yeah, I know. I'm building a family company. Yeah, but you both work all week and now you're gone on the weekend. She doesn't see you at all. And you're wondering if she's pissed off? Yeah, she's got to be pissed off. Hmm. So my wife's angry because I'm busy building our family business so that we can be financially free? Is that what you're asking? Are you asking if she minds that she's going to be able to retire in her 40s? No, she doesn't mind. <laughs> she doesn't mind. And you got to stop thinking that way. <laughs> if you're doing it for the right reasons, no one's going to mind. Now, I just saw a message that someone would like to do an example of a peer-to-peer-to-peer -peer -peer three-way call. Is that what it said, Trish? Yep, good job, PK. Oh, sorry, sunglasses, but I do have bifocals in them so I can read them. <laughs> who's, willing to, who's willing to jump on with me and do a three-way call between Trish and I? Whoa. I will. I asked the question. Hi. Who's this? Hi. It's Amber. Hi, Amber. Where's home? Charlotte, North Carolina. Charlotte, North Carolina. You said Carolina there at the end because you were from there, right there. Got that little <laughs> world of Carolina in there. So what would you like, what kind of an example of a three-way call would you like to do? So I've never done one before. I've done, you know, um, a three-way with someone on my upline just to welcome someone into the business. But yeah. um, I'm curious about the peer-to-peer-to-peer. -to -peer -to -peer. So is this for someone that's not an associate yet? I'm this is to... someone who's already an associate and you're doing a welcome call. Okay. Do you want to play one out? Sure. Hey, Tricia, would you mind being in the new associate? 
Sure. Can you tell me five things about you so we can see what matches up between you and Tricia? Um, so married, two kids. Um, I travel a lot to Haiti, do a lot of, of mission work. Um, I love uh, church as well. And I CrossFit. So you've got two people who love church and a guy who is a pastor for 20 years. I think we've got something in common. <laughs> okay. Right? Yeah. So I would call up Trisha and I'd say, hey, Trisha, I'm really excited that you've just started the program. You know what? I've got a great friend on the line here. And you know what? She has a love for church just like you. In fact, she's done some mission work to Haiti. Would you mind if she came on and shared her 30-second story about what happened the first 30 days that she used the product? Would that be okay, Tricia? Yeah, I'm curious to know. Excellent. Would you mind sharing your story? Sure. So I uh, started Isogenics in August of 2015 and have been CrossFitting since my daughter was six months. Um, after my 30 days, I released 12 pounds and 28 inches all over um, and started breaking glass ceilings at my CrossFit box. So it's been an amazing transformation. Wow. Now, Tricia, don't... Don't I know that you're a bit of a gym rat too? What is it that you do? Um, what would you like me to do? Well, the truth about you, you're a hiker and a swimmer. <laughs> I love it all. I, I've done CrossFit. I lift. I, it's endorphins I'm in. So it sounds like that her testimonial is really going to encourage you for your first month's transformation. Heck yeah. That's awesome. Well, we just wanted to call and tell you that we think we're, you're a complete rock star and we're cheering you on. Cool. Well, I appreciate it. I'd love to connect with you more if I have any questions on, you know, what you're using for your workouts and stuff. Awesome. You just did a welcoming peer-to-peer-to-peer -to -peer -to -peer three-way call. They're that simple. Okay. That's awesome. That's Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. We're coming up to the top here. Any other questions? Because I can't quite read the things all the time. But any other questions of things that we can kind of work through of what we want to do for the next seven days? Because we're going to put in those 10 hours. No? Okay. I'm looking. Um, do you want to do another example with somebody else of a yeah. Sure, sure. Anyone else willing to come out and play? They better be. All right, wants to. She has her hand up. Unmute your phone. I'm sure we can get somebody else. Come on, guys. James, Andrea. Now, I saw a question of how do I get there from online to offline, but I think you meant from offline to online, right? <laughs> Probably. Okay. Um, don't get caught up in the text war. If someone says, I just want to text you back and forth, that's fine. They can do it on their end. But remember, on your end, you can respond audibly. So when you get into a Facebook Messenger chat and they're asking you a question, hit the microphone button at the bottom. Let them hear your voice. Don't do text back and forth. Begin to break that down. After a little bit of that, they'll say, you know, do you mind if we just press the phone uh, symbol up in the corner of this chat so we can talk to each other because this is getting a little long all this texting back and forth but you broke the barrier first by using your voice and not text using the Facebook Messenger chat. Very cool. Have you ever tried doing that before Trisha? Um, no I haven't actually. I do a lot of voice when I'm talking to my team celebrating my team that kind of stuff through messages but never that way. I was really smart. I like it. It kind of breaks the boundary a little bit with them. Yeah. And we don't need to have phone numbers, guys. We have that little phone symbol in the middle of the corner of the Facebook. In fact, that's what I use to talk to my mentees in Australia. It's actually better than a phone. <coughs> so we have some pretty strict marching orders this week, guys. Ten hours of enrolling conversations. Getting on peer-to-peer-to-peer -to -peer -to -peer three-way calls this week. If you have associates who've never allowed you to
to show them how to get their products paid for, this week I'd like you to find some reason to phone them up with a, another friend on the team to congratulate them, to welcome them, to anything them. Start breaking down that distance between them and the rest of the team. It's the missing link for them trusting you to meet their friends because you've bothered to let them meet yours first. It's a little bit of, I'll show you yours, you show me mine, right? You, you got to do it. It's the missing link for many of you who are finding reluctance of people to get their products paid for. So that's our marching orders for this week's Trisha. Sounds good. Excellent. I'm excited. I love that uh, you're giving us action steps and raise your hand if you're willing to take action this week. Okay, awesome. Because PK is gonna hold us accountable every week. He's gonna be asking you what you did and I'm gonna be asking what you did and you should be asking each other what you're doing. So let's really stay accountable. We have five weeks together, guys. You know, really utilize each other, leverage each other, and let's have fun with this. We have big goals, and we're going to have some fun incentives, too, for those that hit their goals over the next five weeks. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I apologize for the, for the sunglasses, but they've been on for two days. Thank you for bearing with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know it's like have a great week, guys. Look forward to talking to you next week. And this weekend, I'm going away for a romantic getaway with my little honey. Every 90 days, we get away as a couple. Why? Because <laughs> we didn't build this business to hang around you guys all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great Thank week, you, guys. Honey. You're Thank welcome. You. Blessings. You. Blessings. Bye. Thank you so much, PK. All right. You guys are awesome. Thank you for joining us. Have a great night. Ask Thanks, Trisha. You just the thread to ask the questions, and I do have a recording of this. Um, so if you need it, you can go ahead and use it. But this is not to share, it's just for your private use. Awesome. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night.